Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Asia Vault Season 4 Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide. Footage is from the PTR, so changes might occur until it goes live, but that's very unlikely. Here in the start we purposely walked on top of one of the whelps to awaken the mobs in the middle of the room. But we didn't know that the skips at the end of the dungeons are not allowed anymore, so you probably want not to do that, as you end up with a lot more percentage than 100 at the end of the dungeon. Other than that, make sure to interrupt the mystic vapors from the lashers as they do AoE damage to your whole party. At the same time, dodge the swirlies on the ground from the arcane tender trees. And also interrupt their erratic grow cast as it stuns somebody and does a bunch of damage to them. After a few packs, you wanna jump down to the first boss room where you have a bunch more of the arcane trees. With few small saplings around them which explode upon dying, so dodge all of that. And then you get to fight Laymore. He's going to spawn a bunch of sprouts around the room, don't get hit by the initial cast. And you have to get rid of all of them eventually. The first way to do that is to target them with the boss frontal that he casts on the tank. After he does a burst of damage to them, so be ready to heal. And, of course, make sure you don't get hit by the frontal. And then the remaining sprouts you have to kill with the big circles that the boss puts around everybody in your party. Make sure you do not overlap them and you spread evenly around the room so you actually kill all the sprouts. After the big circles expire, they not only kill the sprouts, but they also do AoE damage to everybody in your party and you have to heal them back up quickly as the boss is going to cast Consuming Stomp. This does another burst of AoE damage, which is increased for every spout that remained alive. You also probably noticed that every sprout that you killed summoned a sapling, collapsed those on top of the tank and keep in mind that they still explode upon dying, so be careful not to get caught in the blast radius. The boss will cycle through these abilities in the same order until you eventually kill it. After the boss you go down a corridor and around big circles where you encounter several different mobs. The arcane elementals are going to cast Waking Bane, make sure to interrupt that as it puts a party member asleep and although it's dispellable it's better to interrupt it instead of having your healer dispel it. The room keepers are going to cast Condensed Frost which is just a tank buster, you can interrupt as many of these as you can, but definitely save an interrupt for the Icy Bindings, which does AoE damage and roots everybody at place, which is very deadly combined with the Unstable Curator's Forbidden Knowledge, those big blue circles that you see on the ground, definitely dodge these because they one shot. Any spare interrupts you can send into the Curator's Heavy Tome, which is a single target spell. You will also encounter some Crystal Fury Elementals, make sure to purge their Arcane Fury if you can, as that increases the damage that they do. And they will also cast Piercing Shards, which is a frontal that leaves a stacking dot on your target. Obviously, dodge the frontal, but also keep an eye on your tank, because if you're fighting several of these at the same time, they can get quite high stacks and take significant amounts of damage. The Crystal Trashers are even bigger elementals that do an AoE damage around them in a big circle, melee beware. And on the rings you also find some arcane constructs that hit the tank pretty pretty hard, so beware of those as well. Once you get off of the rings you fight some Vault Guards that do Ice Cutters, those are tank busters, so beware of your tank dying, especially on fortified weeks. And the same ability is cast by a mini boss, which also has a spell frost bread frontal, make sure you're not standing in front of the mob. You have to kill it and everything around the circle, so you clear the area to fight the second boss. And some of the packs are going to have those small arcane elementals, which are going to cast AoE swirlies on the ground, simply dodge these. The second boss is Azure Blade, she's gonna summon adds that you need to interrupt and cleave down along with the boss. And then you have to be on your toes all the time because she has a big frontal orb which comes along with more blue swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge. If you're melee also beware because she has a tank buster that also cleaves so you can get one shotted if you're not positioned correctly. After 40 seconds the boss jumps in the middle of the room becomes immune to damage and starts shooting out orbs that you need to dodge. On top of that there's even more blue swirlies on the ground that you also need to avoid and while you're dodging all of these, you have to kill 4 adds that are surrounding and channeling on top of the boss to remove his immunity. 
Make sure that you're using defensives and healing cooldowns during this phase, especially if you're away from your healer, as the adds on the opposite ends of the room are quite far apart. After you DPS down the adds, you go back to the first phase, and everything is going to repeat over and over again, but this time the boss has 50 seconds before he goes into the transmission phase again. After you kill the boss in season 1, there was a skip where you could run back and jump down from the edge to the next platform and skip a lot of trash, but apparently this is fixed and now you die as soon as you go off the ledge. That means that you have to take the long route in the corridors after the second boss and you find some breakers there, which are going to do bestial roar, huge AoE to your entire party, and they'll also mark a player and charge them doing a lot of single target damage, although this one you can line of sight if you're positioned correctly and you're quick enough. You also fight a whole bunch of frogs that are very annoying because they jump out of melee and try to stomp players on landing. So you have to dodge that without stepping on the runes which explode if you walk on top of them. After a whole bunch of frogs and breakers you get to the third boss Grey Wing. Frost bombs will be frequently applied to everybody in your party, after 5 seconds you drop ice circles in the ground that you need to walk away from as they remain there permanently. After the bomb she targets a player with icy devastation, a beam that does a lot of single target damage but while it's active the player also pulsates damage so that person needs to move away from everybody else. And for the last ability the boss jumps off of the platform in the middle and starts 8 second cast which ends up with a huge AoE damage. In order to survive that you need to run in one of the domes that spawn on top of the 4 runes that you see around the platform. They reduce the damage of his ability by 50% but keep in mind that you're still gonna get hit pretty hard on tyrannical keys. These abilities keep repeating until you kill the boss and you jump down the platform to the last one. Umber's Co is a big dragon that's going to cast Dragon Strike on your tank, that's a tank buster that does initial damage and leaves a heavy dot on your tank that you can dispel, so make sure you keep doing that throughout the fight. Crystalline Roar is yet another frontal, so make sure you're dodging that. And when the boss casts Arcane Eruption, few orbs are going to spawn around the room, they're going to start moving around slowly, so make sure you're dodging them and you're never standing on top. At 75, 50 and 25% the boss is going to summon detonating crystal that you have 20 seconds to kill, otherwise it explodes and does heavy damage to your whole party and the crystal is summoned with a shield while the shield holds, the whole party is taking heavy damage, so that would be a good point to use defensives and healing cooldowns. The last ability is called Unleash Destruction 3 second cast that knocks everybody back and does AoE damage to the whole party, make sure you don't get knocked back into one of the orbs. And all of that is going to keep happening until you kill the boss and finish the dungeon. Make sure to check my channel for the rest of the Mythic Plus Season 4 dungeon guides. I'll see you guys there. Now get out of here.